Alright. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Wildcard. I'm gonna try not to yell too much this time. Super Rugby, Super Round, once again, from the beautiful city of Melbourne, from the nanny state, okay? Uh, so yeah, just put your hands up. How many of you took your Friday off and spent two and a half thousand dollars on a plane ticket to go to the nanny state and watch this game from New Zealand, okay? I actually blew my mind that they had two New Zealand teams playing in the opening match of Super Round in Melbourne. I thought the whole concept of the Super Round was Australia versus New Zealand, right? You have the locals and the New Zealanders kind of come together with a bit of rivalry. What's the point of having two New Zealand teams playing each other in Melbourne? I, I know there's a lot of Kiwis here in Australia, but what's the point? Like, are they trying to make this another failure? I don't know, okay? I, the crowd did look a bit better, to be, to be honest, because, you know, uh, I guess there's a lot of Kiwi expats in, 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 uh, in, 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 in Melbourne, but it just blows my mind. Like, how stupid can this be, right? Two new, like the whole concept of Super Round has gone out of the window, right? Uh, also, yeah, what happened to having the Super Round on a different city every year to bring the fans a different experience? Ah, uh, let's just go to the nanny state. Go to the nanny states and everybody go for a night out, right? You know what's really funny? That after the game, right? Uh, they were interviewing Scott Scott Barrett, and it was like, "Oh, are you guys gonna go enjoy a night in Melbourne?" And Scott is like, uh, "Yeah, we, we're gonna go have a drink for a couple of guys for their debut, and then we're gonna focus on moving on to Fiji next week, right?" They can't wait to get out of the the nanny state. Yeah, and oh my God, what a beautiful place to be in Melbourne. Oh, it's rainy all the time. Let's everybody go, go indoors. Uh, like, uh, it's unbelievable, okay? Like, I, you, you can tell this was paid for by the tourism of Victoria, right? Probably, probably, okay? And they still couldn't get people to stay, right? They literally have the players wanting to go to Fiji as soon as possible of the Crusaders. But anyway, that's my little rant about Super Round. Uh, let's move to this game. Um, I'm not going to yell because... I am not a Kiwi, so I shouldn't really get mad about this. But the Highlanders really, once again, not in the same league. Uh, the Crusaders, Scott Scott Robertson has finally learned to put his players in a position that's suited for them, right? Uh, AKA David Havili. He realized that, he, hey, Havili is actually much better 12 than he is at 15, you know? He did spend the last, you know, what, three years, four years since the World Cup cycle? Focusing exclusively playing that 12 jersey, uh, including in the All Blacks. Putting him on 15 last week was kind of stupid, yeah. I know he probably went to, like, the summer training camp of Ian Foster, of coaching, you know, putting all the players in the wrong positions. But, hey, he at least did just this week. And, geez, Dave Havili really showed, showed a few moves this week. Uh, put on a couple tries. What? Set up a couple tries at least. Scored a try himself. Uh, like, the combination between him and Richie Moonga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These two guys playing the All Blacks together at 10 and 12. Yeah, no brainer putting him at 12, right? Instead of 15. Um, yeah, so that that is also quite good for the Crusaders. Finally realizing uh, Ian Foster's coaching style does not work for them. And uh, yeah, so Crusaders put on seven tries on the Highlanders. Did fall off a bit at the end when Highlanders came out with two tries at the end. Probably could have like put the hammer down a bit for the Crusaders to put on maybe like one or two or tries themselves but yeah Highlanders really look at class I felt like um yeah really nothing went for the Highlanders the whole game uh the Crusaders just yeah just really look easy probably as maybe not as good as the Blues looked last week but uh yeah I thought this was a uh, quite an easy game I don't really want to bash uh the Highlanders too much so let's just go to the um uh go to the uh the, the, the stats, seven tries to two. Highlanders did have a nice little finish at the end with two tries. Crusaders overwhelming, dominated the, the, the run meters, 544 to 253. Um, turnovers conceded, surprisingly. Crusaders conceded 20 turnovers. I guess that is a positive for the Highlanders. Uh, managed to disrupt some, like, yeah. It, it shows you how many, uh, the abundance of opportunity that was, opportunities that was given to the Crusaders from the Highlanders, allowing the Highlanders to turn over the ball 20 times and still... Concede seven tries, right? When have you ever seen a game where a team conceded 20 turnovers 
and still score seven tries. Um, I, you know, you let me know. Like, it's it's insane how how much how like oh yeah, it's it's really quite an insane result there. Uh, t- hundred tackles with Crusaders, eleven missed tackles. Harlan's hundred twenty nine tackles, mate. Twenty missed tackles. I've been yeah, also been on high end. Uh, kicks in play. The Crusaders also dominated the kicking game. Havili again being at twelve. Playing as a second half, eh? Really like managing the kicking game a little bit as well, helping out Rishi Mwanga. Uh, really having giving like you know two kicking options in the team really makes the play a little bit more unpredictable as well. Thirty-one kicks over twenty-five for in favor of the Crusaders. Uh, lineouts: thirteen Crusaders lineouts lost one. Uh, Highlanders really struck quite a bit. Six lineouts lost. Yeah, uh, losing six to be on lineout throws definitely not good. Scrums Crusaders also had you know pretty good stump scrummaging as well. Uh, managed to get two tight heads out of the Highlanders. Uh, and finally, penalties conceded 13 and 10. Uh, so Crusaders actually conceded a bit more penalties. But these the Highlanders that receded, uh, conceded a yellow card. I thought this was the softest yellow card I've ever seen. Uh, this was a clean out. And it's a tiny neck roll. And it's like, it's like not even a neck roll, right? It's literally like David Harvey. It was, I, I don't even know how to explain it. He was like, I don't even know how to explain it. It was almost like David Harvini, like, kind of got like, what in the process of being cleaned out, he kind of like went upright, and then as his as his upright, um, one of the yeah, it's it's one of the lowest degree of danger you could ever imagine, and it was a yellow card. I really thought the referees would just look at this and say play on, and maybe just the penalty, like the danger level I thought was really really low considering, um, like it wasn't one of those. Sometimes you could, like, uh, the necro could be quite dangerous if a player, like, ran in and really, like, yanked the player out of the rocks uh, with a neck roll. This was not really the case. It was almost like he grabbed him and his hands just kind of slid up and Havili was in, like, an awkward position. So, yeah, I, I thought this was a bit, bit, bit tough. But anyway, Nick Berry and I think Angus Garner was on the, in the, in the uh, I think Angus Garner, yeah, was the TMO. Thought that was a yellow card worthy. So, you know, I'm not going to disagree with that too much. Um, so with that being said, I don't know what else to say. Let's just go through some of the tries, I guess. Yes, yeah, Severi scores a try 12 minutes in for the Crusaders. Um, 31 minutes in, Crusaders gets a, a I mean, sorry, yeah. Harland just tried to f- get the early three points on the board, actually, uh, three points. Oh, oh yeah, also Harland was playing with what? Billy Burns, brother? What's his name? Freddie Burns at 10. Um, honestly, he, yeah, I, I thought he looked really bad. <laughs> Anyway, I said I wasn't gonna bash at Highlanders, but Freddie Burns, Billy Burns' brother, hands down the best Irish number ten, next to Johnny Sexton, Billy Burns. You know, probably better than will be the goat one day, Billy Burns. But Freddie Burns definitely not there yet, uh, not there. And his older brother so won't, won't ever get there now at this point. But um, yeah, um, Freddie Burns compared to which we should have really got our class a bit. Um, Reese, yeah, Sam Reese, twelve minutes in. Burke, thirty-one minutes. I don't even remember. Uh, Moody gets to try at thirty nine minutes, so the the uh, the front uh, the forwards got a bit of a bit of a go in the first half, and then the second half the thing only got worse for for the Highlanders. Richie Muonga um, scored a try with Havili to kick behind. Uh, Havili gets to try himself after that. Uh, just yeah, just running through the defenders like there was no one there. Um, Cody Cody Taylor gets another try on fifty five minutes with a with a with more I think that was. And then Fyanga Nuku finished the last try for the Crusaders. 67 minutes in, could have finished it a bit more. Uh, but then after that, the Crusaders kind of just went out, ah, guys. Let's just relax a little bit. Bonus point already in the pocket. Uh, let's think about how to get out of Melbourne. Be- let's beat the traffic. And then, um, yeah, so let in two tries. Uh, Timu gets 72 minutes to try. And then another one, Harlan does the 78. So one of the tries was Fakatava, a little kick behind. Timu chased it down and put it down. Which was quite brilliant. Um, Hatfak Tava, yeah, really, I think probably in the, is a little bit undercooked. But to be fair, really looked, you know, with that, with that, you know, kick behind. I felt like that was unnecessary, even though that was a beautiful try. He kicked it behind, uh, and Timu chased it down and put it, and uh, scored. But I thought it, it, it looked like there was a three on, was it like what three on one or three on two overlap. So it could have just gone on the hands. I felt like, and it was an unnecessary risk. It, although it was, it did pay off. But yeah. Anyway, uh, I guess that's all there is to this game. Let me know your thoughts. Um, do you think that Razor Robinson deserves to be the... I think it's really unfair to say. But uh, I think uh, Ian Foster... Um, yeah, 
Uh, I think next week will probably be... I don't know. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts about this game. I did feel like Super Round is kind of stupid at this point. They should just get rid of it. If they do want to do it again, make sure it's in a different city. And um, yeah. Thanks, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. I don't know if I want to do the... Uh, the yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll have to do a gamble with the chokers. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys later. Cheers.